This podcast is proudly sponsored by Gyro Drilling. They provide world-class drilling solutions for all types of projects. They specialize in auger, air core, and RC drilling. Head to the team at Gyro Drilling for all your mining needs and see how they can help you with your upcoming project. Hello, I'm Ben Kostrich, and this is the Market Bull Podcast. As this podcast grows, every subscriber helps. From those of you who watch this on YouTube or to those that listen on Spotify and Apple, every follower helps. If you do this one favor and hit follow on whatever platform you find us on, I promise I will continue to look and find fascinating people across the world and bring their perspectives to you. Thank you and enjoy this episode. So hello, I'm Ben Kostrich and this is the Market Bull Podcast. Joining me on the show today is Gary Harvey, the Managing Director of Rincon Resources. We last spoke around September, episode 62, for those that want to go back and delve through the whole history. But of course, a lot has changed since then. So welcome back to the show, Gary. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me again. That's all right. The the buzz of the new year, we're already into April. Mm. Uh, you've been putting out a fair bit of announcements. But before we go through a lot of the West Arunta activity and news flow, can you just remind listeners a little bit about what Rincon Resources is and guess some of the, the targets and what you're trying to achieve? Sure. So for new listeners and people who aren't aware of Rincon, we're a West Australian um, explorer, essentially. And we have three projects in Western Australia. Uh, We have the South Telfer project, which is in the Patterson Range, East Pilbara region, that's near the Telfer Gold Mine. Uh, We have our West Aranta project, which is in central west uh, east uh, WA, near the West Australian border and the Northern Territory border. And we have a gold project, the Laverton Gold Project, um, in the eastern gold fields right near the town of Laverton, um, which is what the project's named after. Mm. Um, So... So all those projects uh, are being explored. We've been exploring them for the last two years. Uh, last year we focused, or the year before, we focused a fair bit on TOFA, but this year uh, we're really diving into the West Toronto project. And that's really where most of this conversation is going to focus on because that's where, as you said, a lot of the focus is now on West Toronto. So let's talk about that region firstly. What is that? This area of Western Australia known for and what's really been unfolding recently that's, I guess, highlighted the emphasis for the company to, to go there? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, historically, the West Toronto project, the project we have right now, was uh, explored by one of our founding directors. Now, that's how it came into the Rincon portfolio. The region's really well known for, for copper, for gold, uh, rare earths, uranium, uh, other base metals. Uh, mainly uh, on the Northern Territory side of the border, but if you head towards the western end of the, of the province, the, the Western Runter region, uh, you, you start to get into an area that's been, uh, had relatively underexplored for a long time. There's been a little bit here and there, uh, but the potential was first identified, uh, well, it wasn't first identified by Ashburton, but Ash, Ashburton Minerals did a lot of the, the work prior to this project coming into uh, Rincon. And one of the main areas that Ashburton focused on uh, was the Picali Prospect. Now, that's an IOCG copper gold prospect. Uh, it's our number one prospect. We were, mm. drilling right th- we we're drilling there right now. And Ashburton did a certain amount of work up to a certain time and for um, administration reasons, I think, at the mm. time, mm. the project was unfortunately lost uh, and, and Ashburton moved out of the area. Uh, and then th- that project was picked up by a prospector who then sold it back to my founding director at the time and that's how it's come back into Rincon. So there's a there's a fair bit of knowledge that's been passed on from then to now and we realised that this particular area, this project, uh, is a real ripper. Mm. Um, it's got huge potential for a, a discovery, an IOCG discovery. And not only that, uh, rare earths as well. Yeah, we'll go now straight into the the drilling because you announced the market that there's a diamond and an IC drilling program going underway. So can you fill us in a little bit about what's been unfolding uh, and maybe unpack some of the the news flow that you've been bringing out to Mm. investors? Sure. So about a year or so ago, well, actually well before then, in 2021, we did a massive review. We had external consultants review all our data, all the historic data, all the geochem, all the geophysics. And from that, we developed or identified 
two key targets below the Picali system. Now, I say the system, and what Picali is, is really, it's a big outcropping hill, mm. and there's lots of veins and um, copper sitting at the surface, copper and as in malachite, mm. the oxidised mm. version. There's a lot of mineralisation there, and you, if you dive into the geochem, the, the geochem actually tells you it's all got the hallmarks of IACG. Now, at the time, Ashburton, the questions they had, similar questions we've got right now, is, well, where's all that sufficient shallow mineralisation coming from? What's driving it? What's driving that system? So our geophysicists back then, in 2021, you know, did all the gravity and the magnetics modelling and identified these targets. And there's two, so there's two targets out of a multitude of targets that we're testing with the two deep diamond holes. We've completed one, and we'll get to that a bit later. Mm. And we've got one other one to come. Um, and then, coincident with that second hole, we'll have an RC drilling program. And the, the RC and the diamond drilling is designed to... Well, the diamond's testing targets that haven't been tested before to see if they have an influence or control or, or they're the source of all this mineralisation. The RC is going to do a similar thing but test shallower targets, of course, being mm. the RC. Uh, but nonetheless, the entire program is really to try and understand and build on what's been there but ultimately it's all towards um, a discovery yeah and we think we're not that far away interesting well the we'll talk about the, the first drill hole because there was a bit of just confusion in the, in the market potentially about what it really meant uh, and we we're just saying before it, it's sort of trying to unpack it and, and communicate it uh, to, to investors and potential listeners so talking through that result that came back um, what was going on with that first diamond drill hole so I'm not sure why people are confused. I think we've been very clear on our intent, mm. a strategy, and what we, we're trying to do. So as I said, two diamond holes are testing two targets, all right, based on gravity, magnetics, and a host of other factors, including um, geochemistry and drill results in the past, uh, which pointed to, well, we need to test this area that hasn't been tested and this area because that hasn't been tested. And the belief, it, well... It, they may or may not be the source of what's going on. Mm. If not, it doesn't matter. We've got several other light targets that yeah. we will test eventually. Um, but the first drill hole we put up at Bacali North, that was one target, and the other one was Bacali East. We've completed the first drill hole at Bacali North. Now, that was a, a coincident magnetic gravity anomaly, uh, also based on some really good geochemistry we had in that, that area. Uh, copper, gold, tin, tungsten and all our recent rare earth anomalism from rock chips is also from that area. So this hole had the potential to, um, you know, figure out, well, it might have answered the question as to why all that's there. Um, we're still working on that. Mm. Uh, but in the interim and in the hole completed, we um, that hole came back with multiple, multiple zones over a 400 metre width down this hole. Um, which only went to 600 metres. So um, actually from about 130 to 550 metres, there was uh, at least three zones where mm. we had anomalous copper all the way through. And, and, and the XRF confirmed that. And not, not only confirmed anomalous mineralisation, but actually, you know, um, reported grades above percent. Mm. Okay. So that's that's a really good sign that's really good to have that spread of mineralization across over 400 meters in that hole into a target which was tested um is a really good result yeah all right well, probably one of the better results i've had for a while and not only um do we know it's mineralized um and we're gonna we've got more work to do to to work on the geology and all that kind of stuff and and that'll come later but um just based on that we we think and we can infer almost that some of the other anomalism and, and drilling results uh, along this northern side of Bacali Hill, mm. um, we think that's all connected. That's all one particular type of unit and it's a favourable unit that hosts copper mineralisation. So the I guess the next step for that is to, to hone in, um, confirm the extremity and hone in on where the grades the highest, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then build on it, okay? And then slowly, you know, it'll start to build up. It'll all make sense. It'll come out in the wash. And I think 
this is why I keep saying I think we're on the cusp of something really special at Piccali, um, and I'm quite excited. Yeah, so then next steps, I mean, taking words just out of your mouth there. Yeah. there there's a few more things that need to sort of unpack, um, including the other the other drilling campaign, which is happening at, I think it's Drill Hole 2, which yeah. I know investors, and you said before, uh, is coming out soon. So looking at that one potentially now, but also what, what comes next, can you sort of outline what the next phases are or steps are to, I guess, progress these and potentially, as you said, build this picture of quite a unique uh, quite a decent deposit, uh, deposit potentially. Well, yeah, so uh, the immediate next step is to get hole two done. <clears throat> now, hole two is essentially testing uh, the same geophysical signature uh, but at the other end. So there's a massive big signature up the northern side of this this, this hill uh, and there's two sort of peaks in that signature. and we That's what we're testing is the peaks. Um, they're the shallowest points that and the highest uh, density points, mm. I suppose, that we're testing. Um, the, so the second hole is, is down towards Bacali East and the good thing about that hole is it's actually in the area where a lot of the historical drilling by Ashburton yeah. um, focused um, and so we expect that to be another good result, good, good hole. Uh, will it be uh, a hole that comes back with 400 metres at 1%? Mm. I don't know. That would mm. be awesome. Uh, we'd all like that but... You know, I'm reasonably confident that we'll duplicate what we had in hole one or, or go better because there's a lot more facts, I guess, that we know about that particular area as to the other area, um, Bacali North. So uh, that's the next thing that's happening. Now, when we go back to start that, and, and we hope to be back doing that, starting that hole maybe two weeks. Mm. All right, the rain's all stopped now in West Toronto. Yeah, and yeah, well, hopefully that's it's, another point we're going to talk hopefully about. Hopefully it's yeah. all drying out and we can get access in. So... Mm. Uh, we're actually making plans for that to happen. So uh, when we go back with the diamond hole, uh, we've also got the RC rig following us in tail. Now, we've got 2,000 metres of RC drilling to do. There's three areas that we're focusing on. Again, Picali North, uh, Picali East, extension, okay, to, to what's been drilled. Uh, and also, uh, we've got a, a zone, uh, Picali South Central, on the other side of the mm. hill, where there's basically been very few holes in the past, but there's some geophysical signatures there that we think we should test, find out what that means. Yeah, when I was looking on the, the announcements, um, you know, you had the, the map. So for those that are trying to envision what it all looks like, recommend looking at those because that paints the, the picture a bit better. But you touched on there that the weather implication, uh, and I know that that's had a massive well, setbacks for, for a lot in, in that region. Um, mm. And you're talking about now planning around um, the next stages. Hopefully the weather hasn't uh, or has sort of dissipated. It's back to normal drilling conditions. Uh, I mean, w how has that really impacted some of the, the operations at, at Rincon? Oh, look, it's just a slight delay, really. Mm. Um, it's not costing us anything to have stopped. Uh, it's, in fact, it saves us time. Well, it saved us money mm. to actually evacuate and get out because we'd be sitting there waiting. Otherwise yeah, doing that, nothing. That cost you. Uh, so it's it's quite unfortunate. The timing was just really bad. Mm. We just finished hole one. We were just about to go to hole two, and the next day we saw the radar and the weather, and we thought, "Oh shit, there's a excuse something me, coming." Yeah, there's <laughs> a week of rain coming, and the the access road from Alice Springs was almost about to reopen to heavy vehicles which meant we could get our operator in to mm. do all the sumps for the RC. And uh, so we were waiting on that. We were just about to start hole two and we made the call. It's no point really because if we start now, not really heavy finish we don't know if the heavy yeah. vehicles are going to you – know, certainly if that rain comes, we're not going to get any heavy vehicles in. We're running short of fuel, water. Uh, the Kirikara community was – was not getting supplies also. Mm. So we were running short of supplies. So the best option at the time was to get out and come back. Um, and it's only, it'll only be a weeks. two, two yeah. like week yeah, delay, right? So I'm hoping now that the rain stopped, the sun's out, the wind's up, that it all dries out and the Northern Territory Council, the government, Alice Springs Council, whoever does the roads, can get out there and clean that section of track up and allow us to get heavy vehicles in. So then we can get the the diamond rig back in, the RC and rig the RC. in, and our uh, operator to put the sumps in mm. for our RC drilling. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, I think that was, the, at least from my sort of 
research people were a bit naturally frustrated being like, oh, we want to get the results out and, and these things happen. And I think, yeah, two weeks is not as major as, as mm. things could be, like a you know, couple of months or, for example, it well, just gets I mean, completely downpoured. Yeah, the silver lining is we actually got the drill hole core out. Mm. All right, but then there's, a, there's another <laughs> flip side to that is it's actually stuck in Adelaide yeah. because the train line to Perth is closed because of flooding. Fair cop. <laughs> so, so that drill call will be in Perth uh, probably uh, later this week or early next week and we'll do a few more things to that hole before we then cut it, sample it, send it to the lab for assaying and then ah. it'll probably be about a four-week turnaround from assaying. So I'm thinking probably matter, yeah, at least maybe five five weeks Yeah, May, May ish potentially. Yeah, yeah. From, um, from the end of this week. Yeah, okay. so well, six weeks. Well, and we'll the get results po- here. Yeah, the point before, you know, I want to lift it from the, the announcement you put out, which, which we just talked about, was based on the current information, it's plausible to intercept Pakali North and Pakali East may link up. And that's what you talked about before about yes. the potential mm. decent size. I mean, proofing that concept up um, and also talking about how the implications that might have on that entire region. If you start with the first prong, I mean, how do you validate that and, and proof up that potential outcome? Yeah, sure. So, well, one, um, we've got geology to look at now. So we've got drill hole geology and we've got surface geology outcropping at Bacali North and we've got historical data and outcropping Mm. geology at the other end. So we just make, you know, we just go out and and make double check the the geology on the ground and make sure that uh, that's the same geology as that, that the unit's the same, but is the same mineralised unit, Mm. right? Because it could be a separate horizon. So it, it'll be fairly easy to to um, to prove, uh, and you may need to do another two or three holes in between Bacali North and Bacali East along that trend to confirm that. Uh, and I think if we and when we do that, um, that's that's over four over four kilometres almost of strike yeah. of one particular unit or units in in that cluster that's mineralised essentially all the way through. So, uh, you know, if we can replicate intersections um, averaging half a percent plus, like we get at Bacali East, mm. that really, <laughs> that's really significant. Um, and, you know, you just need to do sums on the back of a sheet of paper to figure out hell. Uh, and and that, that's enormous. And a lot of that because it's an outcropping system, most of that copper actually comes right up to near surface. So, uh, you know. Well, that's the second I'll, point there. I don't need to say any more, right? Yeah, that's the second point there about the, the scale of it and I guess more notably like how much that will impact that entire region because, I mean, talking about that, that scale as well, we won't discuss in depth the, the copper outlook, but there is definitely a, a use case for, for that growing uh, and not many copper systems coming online so when you're looking at that region and the potential of that unfolding I mean how much of a spotlight will that again re-shine on the West Saranta region? Oh look I think if you can establish uh, you know a very large tonnage you know moderate grade and I'm talking you know 0.3 to 0.8 percent but if you've got the tons there and clearly if we can confirm and prove Mm. four kilometre strikes with multiple horizons um, and an average grade of anywhere between 0.3 and 0.8, um, starting quite shallow, that's that's a very clear, you know, in my view, an economic case for mm. a potential massive open pit. Um, of course, as you go deeper, the grade has to increase uh, because the costs obviously increase. But, you know, that's a way down the track. Yeah, no. I mean, we've got a proof concept and potential and that's what these early phases of drilling are all about, is trying to demonstrate <clears throat> the scale uh, and, um, you know, what the potential grade of the copper might be yeah. across that scale. So that's what we're aiming to achieve. Now, I think Bacali East is, you know, if we drill the hell out of Bacali East, I have no doubt that that will be uh, a deposit in its own right. But mm. if we can or then Connect demonstrate it. that Bacali East somehow connects to Bacali North along mm. this geological trend, uh, that's, uh, you know, it's a massive that's amount. exceptional. Yeah. Um, and then there's all the south side of the hill that's basically had little to no exploration, which, um, you know, the, the potential's no less than what we already know on Bacali North and East. So that becomes then becomes your next part of the strategy, mm. Mm. right? So work on East, North, and then move around, start adding. 
Okay, so um, look, I think it's a wonderful story. It's a journey of discovery, uh, and you know, I think people should be wrapped. Yeah, with what's happening? Well, I mean, when I was looking at it, like the land mass is it's not not small either. It's a no. massive amount of land to explore, and you know, who knows what else is out there. And I think that's the excitement of, of exploration period. And I mean, this is me looking now at the, the second drilling is more focused on the IOCG uh, copper gold mineralization. Um, that is that part of the RC campaign or is that RC drilling yeah, campaign? So look, there's, there's no, uh, you know, IOCG mm. uh, area. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Sorry, it, you it, it's that, all yeah. the same. It's mm. all the same system. There's different parts to it, right? Yeah. And, what we know about Bacali North, which is still part of the same IOCG system, is that there's there's some rare earth mineralisation there that we've identified, and and so there's an added potential of something at that end that mm. may have something to do with that rare earths. Okay. Okay. That, that's that's another part, but you know we know we know from <laughs> WA one success. Mm. All right. You can drill an IOCG target and you come up with a mineralised carbonatite. So they're the same target. You drill for an ISCG and you might have rare earths. So every drill hole into an ISCG target is effectively a drill hole into a rare earths target or a mm. carbonatite target. So there's no – this target, that style, this style, um, they're IACG slash carbonatite targets. They're one and the same. So drill hole number two is going to be testing the same concept – it's drill hole number one. Yeah. It's just a different part of the system, mm. right? It's just that drill hole number one had the added rare earths floating around. Yeah. Drill hole number two, from what we know, because there's been more work there, has a much stronger signature of IACG, right? Only because there's drill holes that confirm it. And prove yeah, it. history shows right? it. Pakali North just hasn't had that level of exploration yet, so um, it'll, uh, it'll be the same. I think it'll be the same. Mm. So, I mean, on the on the note board, there, there's a fair bit of activity. I can see why, as you said at the outset, the focus is on the West Toronto region because there is just so much to explore. Uh, mm. But if you want to quickly, I mean, highlight really over the next six to 12 months what investors can expect out of the news flow coming from West Toronto and then we can maybe touch on some of the other parts of it because, you know, talking about this now, it's, it's a massive opportunity. And then, as you alluded to at the outset, um, and we talked about previously, there's still a lot of other packages within Rincon as well. Oh, totally. Well, I mean, from our immediate program, you, there's going to be news flow, you know, quite regularly from our activities over the first six months of this year, probably going into the third quarter. Mm. Um, and no doubt the results and what we're doing now will, will drive further work going into the second half of the year. So... There's no specific programs for second half, but that'll That's unfold as we move yep. through this this first round of um, of work programs. So there'll be a lot of news flow throughout, you know, probably the whole year um, for West Toronto, and then uh, you know South Telfer, right? We're, we're reviewing what we've done at South Telfer to, to work out what our next steps are. There could be news flyer about that. Mm. Um, and then also uh, Laverton, right? Gold price is rising. Yeah. Well, it's broken We've out We've got in a Australian project in the prices. heart of, yeah, a tier one gold, gold, gold district and um, we've got to go and do some work there. So there might be some news about that. So I think, you know, across the three projects, but particularly West Toronto, uh, this should be quite regular news flow throughout the, the whole year, but more of it will be second half, of the first half of the year. No, exciting. And uh, from memory as well, there was a recent capital raising uh, recently to help finance and, and pursue these projects. So I'm assuming that's all just going straight into to the ground from from the sounds of what we've talked about. Yeah, pretty much. So we did a, a small raising in, in January and, and the reason for that was um, whilst we were out there doing the diamond drilling, we thought, well, we had RC drilling planned that we were going to start a little bit later. We thought, well, well let's bring it forward increase it, mm. so we need a bit more money to do that. That's what that raising was for and that's why we're doing this RC drilling campaign uh, in the next uh, few weeks as opposed to second quarter or, yeah. or towards the middle of the year. When we last spoke, you talked about the team that was around you and 
I, I recommend people go back and listen to it because, as you said, the story of how West Arunta sort of folded in is yeah. a fascinating one. But if you quickly go over again some of the people that are surrounded you and maybe a bit of their experience within the mining realm. On, on the technical side, uh, I have one geologist who works with me, but I also have a team of consultants, okay? And, and, and it's consultants for geochemistry, geophysics and geological mapping, basically. So, and they're all highly experienced in their fields and I consult and talk to them all the time. In fact, you know, I've got the geophysicists looking at the new gravity data we've just mm. collected. Yes, well, actually, we'll go, we can go into that in a yeah. second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got uh, another consultant look, looking at the geology, looking at the core in conjunction with my geology, geolo uh, with my geologist, uh, to just make sure we, you know, we're, we're getting all that right and we're understanding what we're doing geologically with that drill hole. Um, so. That's how we operate. That's how we keep our costs down. And, um, you know, it works well. And, you know, they're, they're all from the exploration discovery background. So uh, that's where – that's mm. the team you need to be around, where yeah. I need to be around. Uh, that's obviously my area of experience. Yeah, the geophysics <laughs> reminded me as well because that's another part of it with the three key targets um, mm. with, with K1, K2. Um, and I think some of the, the consensus on, online was maybe refreshing listeners on, on why these targets were, were chosen to begin with. So can you talk to us about yeah why these ones were, were selected and yeah, yeah when all that so, information comes back? Yeah, sure. So, uh, and I'll go back to 2001 when we did this initial review of the project and the geophysics and um, so our geophysicists compiled all the uh, free, open source, mm, open, everything that's already been data, done and available, um, and <clears throat> came up with a number of um, you know anomalies or target anomalies that had signatures, coincident signatures of gravity and magnetics. Okay, and and they're the two things. The coincidence of those mm. two types of anomalies is what you tend to uh, target for IOCG, and of course. Uh, carbonatites in this particular yeah. region. Uh, so we had a number of targets, including all the ones we've got at Bacali, that were all identified early in 2021. But we recognised that the ones to the east, uh, K1, K2, PASL, uh, was all based on relatively open, open space data, broad data. So mm. the resolution and the confidence in those targets was was not as good as what you might get at Bacali, where a lot more work had been done. So one of the first things we did was an airborne EM. Now, uh, the airborne EM was really, well, what's potentially sitting, say, in the top 200 metres, uh, that's electrically conductive. Mm. It, it might be a big sci-fi body or, or the like. That identified uh, a number of subtle anomalies and, and the only reason, the reason I say that is because, as I said, it, it really only looked to top 200 metres. So the anomalies that were seen could potentially represent something quite deeper. But the EM just won't what, give you any clarity on that. No. So I thought, OK, well, we had some semi-coincident um, gravity, magnetic and EM, PASL. In fact, the very eastern anomaly in, in PASL was, is, is one of those. Uh, and then, but we still had the other ones which didn't have coincident EM because, you know, it just didn't see anything. But we still had the gravity and magnetics. So we thought, well, we need to, in order to improve our confidence in those targets before we decide we want to go and drill them, mm. we've got to do some more geophysics. So that's why we've gone out and done some detailed ground geophysics. And in the um, instance of PASL, We've gone and done some seismic as well because we do know that in that area there's some um, paleo channels and stuff like that which could interfere with geophysics. Okay. So the seismic will tell sort us. Sort of alleviate any of the doubts. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll, it'll pull out what, what's potentially related to a paleo channel or not and then we can figure out what's a, what's a real target, what isn't a real target. And then we can work out how, uh, when to drill these targets, mm. you know, what method, how deep do we need to drill. All that kind of stuff. So that's that's what we've done with those targets. So now they've sort of been elevated to the next step. Yeah. Um, that's all being reviewed right now. Um, I really like the Passel East or the easternmost anomaly at Passel. That's a I think that's a real ripper, mm. and you no know, doubt there'll be more said about that later. Um, so that's that's that. Um, we've we've done a similar thing at Bacali. We've done detailed gravity. 
So that's detailed on detailed. So we've got some really good gravity data now. Uh, and we're just about to kick off our uh, IP. Okay, that's dipole, dipole, IP survey. Okay. It starts probably in a week. Um, and that's that's going to do some infill lines to some historical IP data we've got and, and really, you know, the 3D geology. And, yeah. and, uh, Paint the real picture of what yeah, it is there. It should yeah. really start to take shape as to what, what's going on underneath. Uh, um, yeah, and the timeline for a lot of this, the sort of start coming out from a, an investment point of view and a news flow? Well, like I said, you know, most of the, the results and the news flow from that is going to be over the next, at least the next month or two. Yeah. Uh, in fact, a lot of news flow will probably come out in the next month or two as we start to re-drill and we've got the interpretation of geophysics, mm. uh, both the gravity and, and IP and seismic, all that will come out. Um, the geophysicists are all working on that right now. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot happening. Um, and then, so that's all that work I've just spoke about really is just our one main lease, yeah. which has to be Carly Prospect. We've now got a bigger portfolio of tenements outside of that, which we've got to start working on, you know, yeah, when they're granted well. and when we get yeah. the access. Uh, so we've got to start building targets on those tenements as well. So there's, there's probably more geophysics to be done on there. Those tenements later in the year, um, site reconnaissance, mapping, sampling, all that kind of stuff. So it'll be a, there's, there's a no shortage of, of stuff to be done and all at various sort of stages as well. Absolutely, yeah. So there's a lot of grassroots stuff to be done and then there's the drilling definition type stuff we're, we're doing at Picali. So there's, it's, it's a consistent um, timeline of, yeah. of work, activity and, of course, news flow. Yeah, and I mean, you said at the beginning the, the, the almost a smorgasbord of resource potential. There's gold, uranium, rare earths and, and copper and mm. who knows what else until we really start getting those those perfect pictures painted. Mm. But, I mean, that does give you a fair bit to, to think about but also, as we know, you know how, do you, how do you potentially specialise? So without putting words in your mouth, I mean, do you see a potential direction as to what happens or is it, again, makes sense, all dependent on what the drilling results come back with? Well, uh WA1 had full intentions of being an IACG explorer and to yeah. discover, you know, but now they're a Niobium mm. resource drilling a, a Niobium rare earth deposit. So yeah. th their, their uh, strategy changed completely on that discovery. Mm. Uh, otherwise, I have no doubt that's, that'd still be doing still what be doing we're it. doing. Yeah. Um, and that could, that could easily happen to us. Mm. You know, we might get so far down the, the, the line if. Picali and then suddenly drill another target and it's a carbonatite. Yeah. Just like B Looney. Mm. I think that'll create a complication, but it's yeah. a good problem it's to a have. Good, yeah, I was about All to say, right. it's, a good one. it's a very good one to have. Yeah. Uh, and so, but, but the reality is, you know, it, it, Rincon is a, a copper gold critical minerals explorer. Mm. So it's all the same. We just have two different the results of deposits. And, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, we go back to South Telfer and we find the massive gold discovery, right? Well, then you've got, you got something else. So then mm. you've got the gold, copper gold and maybe a rare earth deposit. Yeah. Who knows? I'm not saying that's going to happen. No, no, but again, it does. It's <laughs> a, the smorgasbord is, is, is yeah, out there. It's a fair bit. But there, you know, at the, when you're at our phase of the game, you're exploring mm. for something that's economic and that's going to create value for shareholders. Yeah. Right? That's, that's an aim you know, of the game. Until that happens... Yeah, you 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 basically got to you know you open yourself to all opportunities. Yeah, you're pivoting when when and when. Yeah, <laughs> and for those that are wanting to stay on top of it, because you said there's going to be a lot of news flow coming out, drilling and geophysics are, are just strategy, yeah. uh, and even potentially getting contact with yourself. I mean, where can investors go if they want to learn more and follow and keep up to date with all these updates? Sure, I mean, there, there's our website is the first point. Mm. Go to the website. Uh, you know, we're on Twitter. Well, not Twitter. X, X, yeah. Whatever. I think it's always going to be known Twitter. I, I really call quite... it Twitter. I'm yeah. sticking with Twitter. Yeah. Um, um, LinkedIn. Uh, I've got a reason. I've got a company. Well, the company's got LinkedIn and X. I and have a pages. more dominant LinkedIn profile. You can find me there. Uh, you know, you can email, my email contacts on the website. Oh, you can get that off the announcements anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to take calls and emails from anyone and everyone. That's my job. So uh, I don't mind, and if, if, if investors or people listening want more questions answered, mm. I encourage you to get in contact with me. Yeah. Um, because you know this is probably not the forum for me to get into detail around particular questions. Yeah. 
And I think it's all it's all per, based personal, on the person. Yeah, a personal connection. I can explain it specifically. You know, so I'll answer your specific question yeah. instead of more generally. Um, so yeah, that's Any how you get channels? in contact with us. Uh, and you know, I encourage people to do that. Yeah, no, I, I've sort of very something from the outset when I spoke with you. Very transparent. Very happy to have long conversations with investors, um, no matter where they are. So mm-hmm. I implore them all to to do that. It sounds like there's going to be a lot coming, and yeah, listed on the ASX RCR uh, for those that want to put it on their watch list. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Gary, for taking the time to speak with me on the show. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, good to be back. And um, busy, yeah. busy time ahead. Yeah, busy time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Looking forward to it. Thanks for listening to the Markable podcast. Please remember that the topics and stocks discussed in this podcast are not financial advice. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like, share and follow. You can follow the Markable on all our socials and keep up to date with global market insights.